to talk to us about Smartos, uh, sorry, Ilamos Smartos, uh, which is a specialized hypervisor uh, distribution, uh, is Thomas. So, thanks a lot. Give him a hand. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's talk a bit about Ilumos. So, um, it's more or less a specialized hypervisor, as already said. Um, but let's see a bit about, about the agenda. So I will share a bit about myself and um, share a bit about um, how all that Indumo stuff happened and um, what are the difference to Linux and BSD. Um, what makes SmartOS itself really special besides other operating systems and um, share a bit how to use it. And based on that, I hope I prepared a bit of demo so we can log into in some servers and run dumb commands. And uh, besides that, at the end, uh, I share a bit about the community itself, how it's organized, and how you get additional information about it. And then, you're for sure, you can ask a lot of questions. So about myself, so I'm Thomas. Um, I more or less work as a server ninja for Skylime. Um, we provide smart as based hosting and cloud solutions um, with our current brand. And I doing Unix and Linux consultancy for around, well, I would say 15 years or maybe a bit longer. And I more or less focus on system administration and automation and so-called the cloud. And um, may, maybe interesting for people who, well, think a bit about Solaris. Um, I not started with a Solaris background, so I came from Linux to SmartOS. So then we already started with what, what is Illumus itself? Um, what are the differences a bit to Linux and BSD? It might be really hard to read, um, but the most important part is um, that Illumus itself came from OpenRist. So we, at a point for um, yeah, Sun Microsystems, created Solaris, and then they open sourced it. Which, which was quite great for, for lots of people and for the community and I think for Sun itself as well. But then Sun got acquired by Oracle and um, Oracle closed sourced it again. So, and at that point in time, Illumus get forked based on the Sun code and uh, the Open Solaris code and continued with, with the code, improved it and did a lot of stuff as well. Um, it's still different to um, Oracle Solaris, um, but some parts may stay the same. So you can say more or less um, Oracle Solaris 10 is more or less equivalent to Illumus with different feature sets. Well, so what itself is a SmartOS? SmartOS is a Illumus-based distribution. There are a um, couple of more distributions out there, but for, for today, we will focus on SmartOS because I like it really much. So um, it's originally developed by Joyent. Um, they are also, well, oh, they were a cloud hosting company. They got acquired a couple of years ago by Samsung because they would like to use their um, technology, especially SmartOS and um, S3 stored object storage um, for, for their selves, more to say. And um, I think it's now two months ago, or maybe three, when um, SmartOS as a brand, and uh, including them data center features, are to MNX, which is also a cloud hosting provider um, based in the US. SmartOS itself provides um, Solaris features, for example, um, zones, LX branded zones, Crossbow, Open ZFS, and DTrace. Um, later on, I will go more a bit into the details. SmartOS itself focuses a lot about um, virtualization. So you boot from a USB stick or netboot and um, can use the, your complete disks um, for yeah, storing the virtual machines. The configuration itself is really minimalistic and um, it also provides some kind of management tools to manage these virtual machines or zones. It supports 
additional to the zones itself, uh, it supports Beehive and KVM, so you can run more or less every operating system on top of SmartOS. So two zones. Zones provides OS virtualization layer. Um, it's more or less a self-managed container, for example, like Docker, but I would say a bit better, but that depends. Um, it provides um, some kind of is isolation, so zone only, uh, zone only see itself. The global zone, so more or less the smart OS hypervisor thing, um, can monitor the local zone. It provides um, an own network and isolated file system. The resources can be controlled. So uh, memory, disk, network I.O. and uh, CPU cores. You can also configure them firewall settings in the global zone or for the user can configure that itself in his own zone. The zone provides a minimal overhead because it's more or less running bare metal on, on your hardware, so no hardware emulation layer is in between. And um, yeah, you can use services to monitor, monitor your zone from the global zone itself. For example, you can run D-Trace script in the global zone to manage all, or well, to monitor all your customer zones and services inside that. There are some really nice branded zone out there. It's called the Linux branded zone. Um, it provides this Linux syscall translation layer, so you can run Linux binaries on top of SmartOS. These syscalls get being translated to the Illumos kernel itself. It feels and looks like a normal zone, so you can use the same tools to manage both zone types. And um, there are already pre-installed um, yeah, images, so to say, available, for example, for Debian, CentOS, Void Linux, and so on. And it's also possible to run Docker on top of SmartOS based on these Linux branded zones. There is also Crossbow. It, um, it could also be seen as a virtual Nix management tool and um, driver, so um, you can create and manage virtual network interfaces and switches for your zone, interconnect the zones itself, um, yeah, use them kind of uh, anti-spoofing tools to um, yeah, run the MAC filtering or IP filtering or especially DCP package filtering, so a zone will only be able to run DSP and receive an IP address or can only use a specified IP address which you have configured. You can also use them kind of bandwidth tools uh, to limit a bandwidth or provide some kind of tooling around of that. Um, luckily, based on, it's, um, on Open Solaris and um, we have ZFS, so a copy and write file system with pool storage, partitions are not required, and you have a, well, the management layer, which maybe lots of people already know um, on, from FreeBSD or now also from Linux. You, you, based on that, you are able to yeah, run set quotas easily for the zone, and um, you have, for, for sure, different RAID sets, so from RAID 1, some kind of mirroring to RAID that and the RAID set 2 and so on, or RAID 0 for striping. I will not go into much of detail of ZFS. Um, I think it could be a complete other talk. <laughs> but some additional small features, which I think it's, uh, might be interesting, so it provides some kind of compression, deduplication, and uh, snapshot cloning support, and um, also now, for sure, encryption. So you can, um, yeah, if you have a zone, you can run a snapshot based on that, um, do them changes, and if it doesn't work, you will roll back the complete operate, well, the complete content of the zone for your customer. Because we have Beehive and KVM support, um, Beehive support has been ported, I think it's now one year ago or so, um, which provides much more performance instead of KVM. You will be able to run, um, yeah, lots of other operating systems on top of SmartOS. 
So Linux, BSD, Windows, Play 9 is also working. And um, the really cool stuff is you can use the same tools um, for zones and also for Beehive branded zones, for Elix branded zones. They are all the same. And, um, well, look and feel is also the same based on that. So how to use it? You easily download um, the USB image, for example. Boot your server up with a USB stick. Um, follow the installer, which will run them pre-configurations and ask you some questions about network, um, how you would like to configure a set pool. And um, yeah, host name and password are also required. And um, after that, you also boot um, SmartS based on that USB stick. Um, but you will also be able to, well, since now two years, that's already, you can run PI Adim to install it permanently on your disks. But I, I personally prefer to, well, use the USB stick or use NetBoot to boot put all the machines, which can easily be then updated. And the complete disk pool can be used for virtualization or for the virtual stuff. Um, a short note about the global zone itself, which is the zone you, well, is the first zone you boot, or uh, basically the operating system. It's um, a minimal RAM disk, which, um, yeah, well, copied from the USB stick into the memory. Um, it's, yeah, only for zone management, so you do not have much tooling around besides the zone management, so to install something could be a bit harder because, um, well, ETC and root and other um, stuff is not permanent. User couldn't be written because it's in the memory and it's read, mount, read, read only mounted. The only parts where you can write data is in opt and var for permanent storage and for sure you have a zone pool which you can use for virtualization of all the zones itself. The basic configuration is stored on the slash USB stick, which is not the USB stick itself. So, which is in the zone pool, which is a bit confusing. And, um, well, in that basic configuration, it's a basic configuration text file, which you can configure more or less the stuff you have configured already in the installer. Then there are, well, kinds of data sets around there. That we can also see that as images, they are pre-configured zones, LX brand zones, Beehive, or KVM images. They um, well, probably provide you with already them running services or with um, well, a complete operating system, what you already need. There are, well, official images from SmartOS itself. They are more or less prov well, provided by now from MNX. Before that, they are provided from Joint. They can be reached from images.smartOS.org. But there are also community-based images, which are shared with, via data sets AT. So, for example, as a list, you already see, um, well, an Ubuntu image, for example, or a NetBSD image, which you more or less see that it contains Elix, so it's a Linux brand zone. A set wall says um, it will be, could be used for KVM and Beehive. And, um, well, there's the zone data sets, which is a real running zone. And um, you also see, for example, based on the naming, um, there are some base zones around there. Them, there are some MX zone, which provides MX, those mail services. And there are also lots of more based on the community. As to, to create a zone, first you need to import that image. All images are, well, um, more or less named by a new UUID, which are addressed by a new UUID. They also contain names, but that's mostly how you fetch it. So you run EMG, RDM, import, and the UUID, and you get the image, which then locally be stored on your server. Then uh, for the zone creation itself, you um, well, use a JSON configuration file, um, which provides already a of information which are required for the zone. There are a couple of more. This is only a short outcut based on the minimal needs. So, for example, how the zone will be aliased, how the host name is configured, um, how the network of the zone is configured, and um, 
which and how much memory it will use, and what type of zone it is. Um, because it's developed by Joint, the Joint zone is the original zone, so no, not the ELX branded zone. And then you run VM, IDM, create, and the JSON configuration file, and this will probably create the zone for you. And then it will be reachable, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then you can also, yeah, as you can see, you can list the zones as well. For for example, yeah, you run VM, IDM, list. And then you see the current running zones, or probably all zones which are existing on the server. VM ADM provides a lots of more com well sub commands and filtering options for the list command to only see the running zone, to only see zones which well have a memory of 200, or um, which aliases are starting with whatever letter and or what which type it will be or which IP address it will have. As already said, there are lots of subcommands. Um, for example, one of the important is VM IDM get, and you get all the details of the zone. So if it have an auto start, um, which brand it is, which well version type, which memory, which quota, and so on. There are some kind of a bit special stuff, um, especially for Beehive and KVM, because um, Beehive and KVM supports VNC information to connect well, to a via VNC server, a via VNC client to that server, and it um, provides the details of the host name, um, the port, and the display, and if configured, also a password for that VNC session. Then you can easily log in with, well, with set login, you easily can log in into existing zones, and um, then you receive a shell there, well, if you have configured. Um, SSH, you probably can also use that, but that provides a quite easy management functionality. And you can also use that login, which then be a bit wrappered to um, Beehive zones as well. Because there are already, um, well, we talked a lot about commands itself. There are also some kind of, uh, yeah, web UIs or orchestration software on top of SmartOS. So the origin one um, firstly developed by Joint is uh, the SmartOS Triton data center, which provides, well, all the data center functionality you need from, from kind of master server to manage the, um, yeah, your zones or your virtual machines with an API and so on. But there are also, well, now two kinds of uh, community projects. Um, for example, there's Project FIFO, which um, is, well, sm well, starting with the top one, SmartOS Triton Data Center is more or less written in Node.js. Um, Project FIFO is written in Erlang. And um, for Danu Cloud, I'm pretty not sure what it is. Um, it's a kind of, also, I think, um, based on Triton Data Center, but I'm really not sure. But yeah, all of them provides, uh, well, different kind of web interfaces to manage these zones or provide a bigger cluster on top of that. Well, basically a data center. Well, then, um, yeah, I more or less prepared. <laughs> I, I hopefully, you might hopefully see it, maybe a bit. Um, I prepared a kind of demo or, well, would like to show you a bit around. So, um, yeah, I currently have installed SmartOS. Um, they are below you, well, I'm running in, in my local environment, so you're more or less running a seeing console. Um, yeah, but there we have a shell, which more or less hopefully can be good read, and I have well, written them types, which I would like to show you around. Um, as, as I said, you, you more or less have VM, ADM to list the zones itself. It's a bit to get everything. Um, yeah, you have EMG ADM avail, for example, to see the available, available um, yeah, zones. Maybe 
yeah, the network is working. So, um, yeah, for example, there are some kind of pre-configured zones. You have some basic zones. Um, yeah, based on the naming, they provide um, yeah different tooling inside. Everything on SmartOS itself, or especially the SmartOS branded zones, are managed um, provide software packages via package source. And yeah, and there are also some kind of LTS images which more or less provides longer support of package source packages there. So you do not need to, to update it itself. So if we're going back to VM ADM, um, we currently, as you have seen, uh, we have two OS branded zones, which, which are, um, well, native zones, and we have one LX branded zone. I, as, I'm, as I said on my local setup, I will not run any Beehive because it's required a bit of more RAM. So if you, for example, log in into a, well, Elix branded zone, so I'm well, doing a bit of file, user bin file, for example, and um, you, you more or less see that's a really Linux command which exists there and can be easily used on top of that. And um, one might be some interesting stuff. There's a slash native, which provides native commands from outside this zone. So for example, if I run a setfs list, well, currently no data set is available inside that, but that's a native command, which is based on from the outside smartest global zone. So if we log out, we can also easily update some kind of quota if we, for example, need more or make it smaller. And it's update live. So for example, if we're going for that quota, we more or see that's going to be five. And if we're going into 10, We also got that, and I currently need to see which time we currently have. So we might have a bit of time left. So if we log in here again, I can also show you how the JSON files looks like. So maybe interesting for for the Elix print so itself if it. Can we, yeah, um, we need to provide a kernel version. This kernel version is more or less um, for Illumos and or for SmartOS itself to know how which type of syscall translation layer should be used. So if something changed into the in the Linux kernel and it doesn't match 100%, you can also choose a different kernel version. Depends a bit on your needs. Also with Dtrace, you will be able to um, yeah check the syscalls in in the Linux branded zone, if the well, call works or not, and if it's implemented in SmartOS and really working or not. Most of the syscalls, well, for regular commands and for regular programs, I guess it's working. So for for example, I an open RA, uh, so Red Alert server in top of void Linux because it's a hell to get mono working on SmartOS at the moment. And as you currently see, um, yeah, mostly we have the network configuration there. Nothing more is provided. Um, if we go into another example, you can provide them more details, um, which is called metadata, which are auto well, which you can read out in inside the zone and well run on top of that, dumb commands or, well, pre-configure the zone. And you can also use user script, which is a, well, probably a shell script or whatever type of script, which you can put in here, and it will be executed automatically on the start zone. Yeah, probably that's m mostly all. A bit about the community itself, um, yeah. We have illumus.org, which provides, well, basic Illumus information, also some kind of information to the other um, distributions out there and which more or less features they provide. For SmartOS, um, I can really recommend the wiki page, 
which provides mostly all information about SmartOS and how to use it and additional commands itself. On GitHub, you will find the code currently moved from join to Triton Data Center as a naming. And um, yeah, for SmartOS itself, it's SmartOS Live. There is also um, Illumus SmartOS, which is a, well, a fork of the Illumus code to provide maybe additional features or upstream that. The community itself is more or less organized um, well, on IRC, and um, I think they also provide a matrix bridge somehow, but I'm, I'm really not familiar with it. Um, yeah, and it's also good organized in, well, in different lists and mailing lists, which, which also helps a lot. Yeah, that's probably all from my side. So if you have any questions. Awesome. Thanks so much. Um, we've got plenty of time, so any questions, please take it away. Yeah. Um, when you were doing the demo, you were always, or also in the slides, you were always using the full ID of the zone, which was pretty long. And yeah. uh, I am sure when the system is small scale, it's easy to oversee, okay, that's zone one, two, and three. But can you also use the alias uh, to use the zone admin commands, or yes. are they not unique? Yes, yes. You can also use the alias and use, um, well, tap, tap, and then it will translate the alias into the, well, UUID. And then the UUID is well, used for the addressing itself then. Mm. Okay, so you end up with the ID, but you can use the ID yeah, to translate. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, if there's no more questions, uh, then that's it for us this evening. So, uh, thank you once again. Thanks as well. <laughs>